Hello, and welcome to the Stone Branch Universal Controller Video Classroom. Universal Controller has numerous automation capabilities and a rich API. It allows you to manage automation on all of your platforms. In this session, we will simply review the fundamentals of the application. After logging into Universal Controller, you are greeted with our GUI. Beginning at the upper right hand corner, you have a question mark icon, which takes you to our documentation. A console icon, which displays system messages and errors. These appear and fade away in a lower pane. The home icon, which returns you to your primary dashboard. A drop menu beneath your name, which allows you to adjust your preferences. And lastly, a system clock. On the upper left-hand corner are the five categories of automation sensor, which is the primary category for building tasks, workflows, and triggers. Reporting, which allows you to build custom dashboards and reports. Agents and connections, which facilitate building connectivity to email, agents, and databases. Bundles and promotion is used to promote objects between environments such as development and production. And lastly, administration, which allows you to manage users and groups, create custom universal templates, and configure overarching application settings. In this brief overview video, we will focus on four fundamental items within the first category of automation sensor. The four items are, first, activity, which is one method allowing you to view the status of your workflow workload. Second, tasks. A single task is the smallest unit of work within the application. Some use the term task and job interchangeably. Workflows, which is a series of tasks connected in a way to indicate precedence. And fourth, triggers which simply indicate when tasks should launch. A trigger can be time and or event based, such as a file monitor or task monitor. Let's start by building our first task. There are multiple task types and beyond the scope of this video is the creation of custom tasks. On the left hand menu, select Linux task in the configuration window, add a name, an agent to execute the task on, and this can be any server in your environment, and lastly, a command to execute. Select Save. We can now manually launch the task. and view its status by selecting activity. Next, let's copy this sample task. Again, select Linux tasks or its tab may still be open. Highlight the desired task, right click it, select copy and provide it with a unique name. Perform this two additional times for a total of four tasks. Now that we have our desired tasks, let's create a workflow. On the left hand navigation menu, select workflow tasks. In the configuration window that appears, add a unique name for this workflow. Only after saving the workflow are you able to manipulate it. Do this by selecting Edit Workflow on the middle bar. A canvas appears which allows you to build your workflow. A toolbar across the top allows you to manipulate the items on the canvas. The diskette saves the workflow 
The binoculars allow you to search for and add an object to the workflow. The cursor, which is the default, allows you to select objects. The two connector lines allow you to indicate the precedence of tasks. Further along are magnifying glasses, which allows you to increase, decrease, or fit the canvas to the screen. To add tasks, select the binoculars, and in the Find window, add the prefix for your tasks and select Search. You can now select the icon for the desired task and drag it onto the canvas. After adding the four desired tasks, we can select a connector line to indicate precedence. One thing to note is that the connector lines default to success. This can be modified by right clicking and indicating the desired status for a given path. We can now select the diskette to save the workflow and exit the canvas. With the workflow created, we can manually launch it in the same method as we did the individual task and again view the results on the activity screen. To complete our fundamental training, we will build a trigger which indicates when our workflow should launch. Triggers can be accessed from the left hand menu or directly from the task or workflow you are manipulating. With the workflow tab open, again select your workflow. In the lower pane select triggers. Then, via the drop-down menu, select Time Trigger. In the Trigger Configuration window that appears, you can now indicate when you desire the workflow to launch. First, provide it with a succinct yet descriptive name. Since we initiated the creation of the trigger from the task, it automatically populates the task field. For our purposes, we will cause it to launch hourly by setting the time style to interval and the interval value to one. With this in place, you can select save. To put this into effect, you can right click the trigger and select Enable. We now have a workflow which will launch hourly. Additional information on this or any subject as well as tutorials can be found by clicking the question mark on the top right corner of Universal Controller. Thank you for attending this video classroom.